this is my first guitar. But when they gave me this guitar and I was seven years old, I hadn't the faintest idea how I was supposed to tune it or where the, all the notes were. I didn't know how to play open chords, and that's because they just forgot to send me to a guitar teacher. And so for two or three years, I was just playing melodies and just on a single string because it was the only thing I was able to do. A few years later, I found a good classical guitar teacher, and so I learned how to read music and I studied classical harmony. But I wasn't aware of the connection between that and solos and chords and all the stuff that I was already doing with my band. Traveling forward a few years in time, I started taking jazz guitar lessons. But in the end, I was just left with a big book full of hundreds of chord shapes and scales and arpeggios all over the neck that I was totally unable to memorize. And so I started to use the fretboard to visualize the shapes of chords and scales and I started to see how they were connected to one another and how they could be moved and transformed and that shapes that looked different were actually the same. And I think that this visual approach can really help you to memorize and understand all these elements. So now we can start where we left off in the last video, where we visualized all the intervals that we needed to understand and memorize the circle of fifths. We saw a fourth interval with this movement, a fifth with this L-shaped movement, and an octave with a larger L-shaped movement. So on the fretboard, all the shapes remain the same, even if we move them around. These will always be fifths, octaves, and even if we move vertically. Nope. Okay, there's clearly something wrong here. When we move any shape vertically, and we go from the third to the second string, we need to move forward one half step, up one half tone, or more precisely, we have to move one fret higher. We need to compensate for the different tuning between the second and the third string, because this, this is not a fourth, it's a major third. And so, the pattern of the fifth is gonna change moving from the third to the second string. And it will go back to normal going to the first string. This rule that I call the first law of strings theory may look like an obvious thing, but now we can see that these interval shapes, they are not, they're not really changing. They're just distorted by the different interval between the strings. And we will see how it affects scales and chords and all other shapes on the fretboard. Going back to intervals, we will now consider the shape of a major third. If this one is a fourth, Moving back a half step, one fret, we get a major third, and if we add a fifth, we can start to see the shape of a major triad arpeggio. We can also add an octave to it. And speaking of octaves, if we move it back one fret, we get a major seventh. Going back another half tone, another fret, a minor seventh. So now we can visualize these two intervals and see how the minor seventh is on the same fret, two strings up from the root. Combining all those intervals, we can get a nice arpeggio, a dominant seventh one. But in particular, we can observe this shape playing the first, third, and seventh degree minor seventh. And so this shape, a bit like a triangle, can be the backbone of many dominant seventh chords. From a simple open C7 to C7-9, C7 sharp 9, and so on. If you move it down, we see that the shape is still working. But if you move it up here, we need to Move this finger up one fret, like this, because of the first law that we mentioned before. Let's consider now a minor third. We can either visualize it one half tone below the major third, so we got this, this kind of inverted L shape. But in many cases, it could be easier to visualize it on the same string. Root, minor third, fifth, and octave. We get 
a minor arpeggio. But even if we play the minor third on the next string, we can still play a minor seven arpeggio, but without the fifth. It's still a very nice minor seventh shape to remember, and we can also add a ninth up here. In the last video, we used this kind of patterns to visualize and memorize the major and minor chords that belong to a key. And so, the chords that lie on this L shape are the major chords C, F, G, while the ones on the other L shape are the minor chords, and so we can use the same approach to analyze harmonic functions inside of our progression. We can visualize a 5-1 cadence like this, like these two notes on the same fret. We start from the root and go down one string, going up a fifth just like going, going down a fourth, from G7 to C. Another very common cadence is the 2-5-1. So if we still consider C as the root of our progression, we get second, fifth, and root. And this can help us to see the cadence. We can also consider this very peculiar interval, and that's the augmented fourth or diminished fifth interval, and this is also called a triton. Also called the interval of the beast. It used to be called the devil's chord a few centuries ago, but we won't go into the details just right now. We use this interval to do what is called a triton substitution. Instead of playing a dominant chord on the fifth degree, we play the dominant chord that is an augmented fourth from the fifth degree, which sounds a lot harder than it actually is. In practice, our cadence is not G7 to C, but it's... So even to find the triton, to find the chord that we need to substitute for the fifth degree, we can use this diagonal pattern. Going up one string and one fret. So instead of playing G7, we play D-flat 7. We can use the same method even to visualize triads. They are the basic chords made up from 1st, 3rd and 5th degree. We don't have to play the 5th up here all the times. We can also play it here on the 3rd string. So we got a major triad and a minor triad. If we move the 5th up, an augmented triad. If we move up one string, the shape will be simpler with all the notes in a row. First, third, we use the same pattern as before, and the fifth is gonna move because we have to go up one fret. It's gonna be easier to play the major triad up here. So major, minor, augmented triad, we can see that this triad is just a part of a simple bar chord. Another interesting thing we can do with this method is chord construction. Let's consider the intervals on the same fret. We start from the root, fourth, minor seventh, and minor third. And this is very useful if you want to find, let's say, a minor seventh chord, something like this one. We can omit the fifth, so we can play it up here on the second string. And starting from this shape, we can get a lot of different chords, like a dominant seventh or a major seventh. And we can start to explore this kind of chords. Once we know where all the intervals are, we can add and move all the notes we need. If this note is a fifth, we can find where the sixth is. Another result that we can get, if we use our guitars as a computer, is moving our chords vertically on the fretboard. Because if we move them horizontally, all the shapes will sound the same. But we saw that if we move vertically, we generally get into trouble. And this happens because of, of, of this rule that says that it is better to tune your guitar. And this happens because of the fact that the strings are tuned differently, a major third instead of a fourth. But if we just remember this one simple rule, and we don't usually think about it, 
but we already know how to move our chords vertically on the fretboard. We can start from this A minor 7th, and if we want to move it and play the shape that starts from the 5th string, we just have to move the whole shape up and move this finger up one fret, like this. If we move one string up, we move this finger up too. One fret up, and so we. We are actually using the same shape, the same pattern as we move up. And we can play all three chords. There's just some sort of visual distortion of the shapes. And that's because of the different tuning, but actually, the basic shape is always the same. And we can see this even on very simple chords. E, A, D. They look like very different shapes, but they're exactly the same thing. Because if you move this E up, up one string, we just have to move this finger up one fret. Going up one more string, we will move the finger that's in the middle up one fret. So we can see that we're just modifying the original shape. And if the shape remains the same, we can see that if we move the same finger in any of these chords, we get the same result. The finger in the middle will give us major, major seventh and dominant. And again, we get major, major seventh and dominant major, major 7th and dominant. And this is another thing that can help us to memorize chords. And this works both with very simple chords and with the more complex ones. We just move the finger that lands on the second string up one fret. So we can now memorize just one single shape and almost instantly we can move our chords vertically on the fretboard and always get the right shape. Okay, now we explored a few ways to use this system to memorize intervals, chords, triads, arpeggios. This method is not intended to take the place of the regular study of theory and harmony and all the rest is just a tool to help you learn and memorize things but also it's a way to see all the connections between the different shapes and fingerings and the geometric shapes that can help you to see all this the sounds and the intervals and harmonic structure and progressions so it's a method that exploits the peculiarity of the guitar that is not linear as a piano, we can see all the notes laid out clearly in black and white keys, and it looks very simple. On the other end, we got a lot of perks on the guitar. We can transpose scales and chords and arpeggios, moving all of them horizontally on the neck. Just moving the same shape all around. But also the fact that the guitar is tuned in this particular way can help us to see the intervals and the harmonic relationships with patterns that we can easily memorize. And that's the thing that is not always so easy on the piano, because we always have to be aware of the notes and the intervals, because unless we're playing in the key of C, we got all those black keys that mess up all our patterns and shapes. So this is a way to get the most out of our instrument, and maybe looking at all these things from a very different perspective. Let me know in the comments if you find this video useful and interesting. And also, if this method has helped you to find new chords, new shapes, new triads, or if you think it's just boring and useless. This is all for now. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.